I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German monk is intoxicated with himself. Sober him. Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast where we sit down at the kitchen table with an ice cold beer and talk about theology. Theology is an amazing thing, and some of the best theological conversations to come out of the Lutheran tradition came from a table with Luther with beer. I know, I know, I, I've alienated half of my Christian audience already. How dare you consume alcohol? Well, wine was given to gladden the heart of man, and so I give you Lutheran lemonade to gladden the heart of man. Now, as promised on this episode, we are going over to our friend Todd Friel at Wretched Radio, and we are going to talk about whether or not Aaron Rodgers was ever a Christian. Now, why is Ryan talking about Aaron Rodgers? Because Ryan has Wisconsin blood. Ryan was born and raised in the state of Wisconsin. Ryan is a green Bay Packers fan and I love Aaron Rodgers. I love watching him play. I love wearing his jersey on game day. I love wearing his jersey at work on Friday because I don't have to wear a collared shirt. And this is a really important conversation to have. So in the spirit of fair use, we're going to go over to Wretched Radio, Wretched on YouTube, and uh, this was originally aired on January 23rd of 2020, and it's going to take Todd Friel all of 35 seconds to put his foot in his mouth. Let's do it. This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. This is Wretched Theology with Todd Friel. Dalai Lama. Yeah, it's been a, a fun path to... To a different type of spirituality, which, uh, which to me is more, it's been more meaningful. Former Christian Aaron Rodgers, this is Wretched Radio, the Green Bay quarterback, announcing publicly, I used to be a Christian, now I'm spiritual. Does that mean he lost his faith? No. It means he never had a saving faith in the first place. There it is. 35 seconds on the dot. Former Christian? Look, uh, if you're in gastrointestinal distress, Todd, I recommend Metamucil, okay? You look like you're getting up there in years. Aaron Rodgers, former Christian? Does that mean now that he's spiritual and not religious, he's lost his faith? He's no longer Christian? No, it means he never was one to begin with. You moron. Can I say that? It's a toss-up between moron and jackass, and I'm not sure which one I want to go with. But, no, no, no. Let's be objective. Todd Friel, throughout this, and I'm going to provide a link to the YouTube video in the description below, uh, is going to make a lot of valid, valid points. But for the sake of fair use, I think I'm only going to use these 35 seconds. Uh, gosh, it's hard, man. Once you go Todd Friel, you never go back. Aaron Rodgers was never a Christian because he lost his faith. That's right. That's right. In Todd Friel land, if you fall off a boat, you were never on the boat. <laughs> you have to have been on the boat to fall off it, Todd. Oh, my goodness. Now, I... For the sake of brevity, dear listeners, I'm only going to go to one of many Bible passages on the topic. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says, did you hear that, Todd Friel? The Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now, when I depart 
my home in the morning to go to work. It means I was in my home and I'm leaving to go somewhere else. I have made the conscious decision to walk out the door of my home and go elsewhere. But in Todd Friel land, in American evangelicalism land, if I decide to depart my house, I was never in my house. So we're going to ignore all of Paul's encouragement to remain steadfast in the faith. We're going to ignore all of Paul's comments about those who have shipwrecked their faith. We're going to ignore all of that because Todd Friel says, You were never a Christian if you lose your faith. This is wretched theology. <laughs> now, on the topic of snark, I'm being incredibly snarky towards Todd Friel, and I can, because brother to brother, I can do that. I don't want to express any snark or ill will towards Aaron Rodgers. I want to express nothing towards Aaron Rodgers except for empathy and compassion and understanding and peace and love and patience and to encourage him towards perseverance now in this 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 wretched radio video Todd Friel lets Aaron Rodgers speak in his own words and Aaron Rodgers describes going to church and then on Monday going to uh, a youth ministry and it was fun and what Todd Friel says that's true is that fun doesn't save souls the truth saves souls souls. And Todd Friel's not wrong in that aspect. Much of what Todd Friel says after that first 35 seconds hits the nail right on the head. But my goodness, we're talking about a little leaven leavening the whole lump. That first 35 seconds has got to go, Todd. You can't say that he was never a, a Christian, Todd. Hand check. Hand check. Okay, mine don't have holes, Todd, do yours? Then you're not Jesus. You don't get to decide whether or not Aaron Rodgers was ever saved. Was Aaron Rodgers ever saved when he was a churchgoer? I don't know, because I'm not God. Neither is Todd Friel. But Todd Friel hits the nail right on the head. Worship as entertainment instead of worship as goddesses, God's divine service to us, where he comes to dwell with his people, where heaven meets earth, where God descends where his where God is, where his name is. Where two or three are gathered in his name, God is where his name is. Where he comes to us, truly, physically comes to us in his preached word and in his sacraments. Now, Todd Friel is going to disagree with me on that as well, but Todd Friel needs to open up a dictionary and take a look at the meaning of the word is. Because, Todd, are you listening? Is means is. Is. So Jesus is truly present in, with, and under the bread and the wine. He comes with his body and blood to forgive sins. That is what worship is. God coming to serve us. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. And he still comes to us today to serve. Now, Aaron Rodgers must have gone to a church where they didn't teach that and he he in this this video and i encourage you to watch a description in, in the comment in the the or link in the description below talks about how there was this youth thing that he would go to on monday and it was fun well fun doesn't save souls and this is where mainline american protestantism is killing itself shooting itself right in the foot and losing its youth they're pandering to the youth and giving them pizza and popcorn and movies and a safe place to hang out. And they're not teaching them the truth. 
And on that, I completely and wholeheartedly, unequivocally agree with Todd Friel. The truth, the Bible says, shall set you free. Now, Aaron Rodgers makes a lot of errors in his interview, in his understanding of Christianity. He makes this off comment about how there's only going to be 144,000 must have been influenced by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And then he's like, but there's 7 billion people on the planet now. And I'm... Aaron Rodgers talks about what an unloving God to want to condemn his beautiful creation. And Todd Friel addresses it rightly in many places, but he gets it wrong when he talks about how I don't remember exactly how he said it, but there's this serious implication that Jesus didn't die for everyone. So let's set that record straight, shall we? Jesus died for everyone. Jesus, from the cross, proclaimed tetelestai. It was accomplished. It is accomplished. It shall be accomplished. Tetelestai. The debt is paid. The work is done. The atonement has been made for the sin of all of mankind. The wrath of God for every sin committed by every human being through the whole of human history until that trumpet sounds on the last day has been poured out on to Christ. And I want to make this abundantly clear. There are forgiven sinners in hell. And there are forgiven sinners in heaven. What is the difference? The ones in hell have rejected the gift. The ones in heaven have received the gift, not in that they grasped it for themselves, not that they made a decision for the Lord in a passive tense. They have received faith. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless by the Holy Spirit. Faith is a gift of God. And it's not a gift that you must open the gift is that God made you alive. The gift is that you were dead in your trespasses and sins and God made you alive. And the first fruit of being made alive is that you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord because God has made it so that you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And this is something that Todd Friel is going to disagree with me on. You don't go to hell because God wants you to. You don't go to hell because you were predestined to go to hell because the Bible does say to you, Christian, to you, to the you, the believer, you were predestined for salvation before the creation of the world. The Bible says that, but that doesn't mean all the rest were predestined to damnation. The promise means what it says. You were predestined before the creation of the world unto salvation. So, as it was explained to me when I was at Concordia University, Wisconsin, taking Thursday night biblical theology, if you are saved, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. And if you are damned, it's your damned fault. That's the truth of it. That's the predestination in the Bible. The Bible only proclaims predestination, not double predestination. Now, Aaron Rodgers makes this logical leap in that the God of the Bible can't be real because he's mean. And as Todd Friel points out, and rightly points out, if you go to someone's house and they're rude to you, that doesn't mean they don't exist. It's, it's a poor argument, but... It's an argument that Aaron Rodgers is conditioned by the world to make. So what do we do? I, and, and that's a very real question. Comment. 
if you're watching this or listening to this on SoundCloud, comment. What do we do? How do we tell Aaron Rodgers the truth? If you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. I'm asking you your opinion, your advice. What do we do to get the gospel to Aaron Rodgers? He has been falsely taught, and our criticism ought be to the false teacher, which is why I'm being so hard on Todd Friel, because he is a wretched false teacher when it comes to being saved and falling away. So I'm criticizing Todd Friel, but what do we do about Aaron Rodgers? Let me know. I'm, something has to be done. Someone has to tell Aaron Rodgers the truth. Someone has to tell Aaron Rodgers, you've been hurt by your church. If you listen to this entire 11-minute uh, video from Wretched Radio on YouTube, you will listen to Aaron Rodgers talk about judgmental people in the church who will look at you funny for not wearing the right thing or behaving a certain way, and those people exist inside the church. Aaron Rodgers fell away from what shaky little faith he may have had because the church hurt him in some way. That is a big reason why people fall away from the church. But that so Aaron Rodgers needs the truth. I think he deserves an apology. And I think he needs to be told it's fascinating. And it's wonderful that you're studying other religions. There are great moral principles to be gleaned from other religions. But as a fact of human history, Jesus Christ was crucified under Pontius Pilate, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. That is a fact of history. So, Aaron, whatever happened, however you've been hurt, however shallow and hollow and empty the theology of your church was, however wretched the false teachings, Jesus Christ was crucified and is risen from the dead. That is a fact. That is is the truth that you are looking for. And that means, Aaron, that all of your sin, all of your wretchedness, all of your mistakes, all of your rebellion against God was nailed to the cross. All of the wrath that comes from God towards sin was poured out onto Christ in your place. Aaron Rodgers in his interview says how cruel God must be that he would condemn people to hell. That was someone needs to we need to get the message out to Aaron Rodgers that was never ever God's intent. When God created the world, he created it for mankind and we fell away from God. And that's how it works, Todd Friel. God gives us his good beautiful gift absolutely free without us having asked for it without us having deserved it without us having earned it he just plunks us down in the garden of his salvation like he did adam and eve in eden and those who are not allowed in the garden are those who have rejected god like adam and eve did in the garden hell dear Aaron Rodgers, was created for Satan and his angels. It was never God's intent that mankind should go there. But God did tell us, the day you eat it, or that when you eat it, you will die. And we do, physically and spiritually. But God, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, listen to me. God never intended and God does not delight in mankind choosing hell for himself. And there are church bells that ring on every street corner across this country and throughout the world that ring the gospel truth. Jesus sinners doth receive. 
So Todd, let's let's wrap it up this way. Todd needs to go back. Todd Friel needs to go back and read the parable of the sower. Because I don't think he gets it. That the sower throws out seeds. And there, there are some people who are like the road. And the birds come and eat the seeds right away. There are some where the seed takes root. Or the seed... Yeah, the seed takes root but doesn't grow deep and the sun scorches it. There are some where the thorns choke it out. So yeah, there are some on the road that simply never receive it. They never receive it and that's on them. But there are some like Aaron Rodgers who received it. But it wasn't nourished to grow deep roots. And when the sun scorched it, it withered and died. But that doesn't mean the plant never grew in Aaron Rodgers. Todd, do you even read the Bible? I wonder sometimes. So, uh, take a look, watch the video, uh, decide for yourself. Comment below where you think Todd Friel hit the mark and where he missed the mark. But the gospel message that gladdens the heart of man is that God does not desire the destruction of the wicked and that God went to such extreme lengths to redeem mankind that he sent his only begotten son to incorporate into his divinity our frail humanity and that in that humanity the god man would bear our death that god would shed his blood in our place and he gives us the fruit of that cross in church on Sunday with the bread and with the wine. When he says, take this and eat it, this is my body, which is given for you. Take this and drink it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. God's work is to redeem Sinners, it is never his work to condemn them. Sinners condemn themselves. God redeems us, and he has redeemed all of mankind, Todd Friel, all of mankind at the cross. Not just some, not just the elect. It's amazing you mock Aaron Rodgers for quoting the 144,000 as if it were literal and then talk about how there are just some that God doesn't save. God shed his holy, innocent, and precious blood for all of mankind. He has redeemed, purchased, bought back, won all of mankind. Those who go to hell have chosen it for themselves. I also recommend, Todd, in addition to going back to the parable of the sower, you pick up The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis because it points out that even if the damned were to be given a holiday, they would still find a reason to go back to hell. In that, heaven is a free gift of God, and hell is the choice of fallen mankind. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade.